Hi, good evening, everybody. Tonight, uh, thank you, everyone, for attending our webinar uh, tonight with Dr. Rose Kumar. Uh, Dr. Rose Kumar is board certified in internal medicine. Uh, she graduated from the Albert Einstein College of Medicine in New York in 1986, completed her internship at UC San Francisco and residency at Stanford University in internal medicine. Dr. Fumar was voted top doctor in internal medicine twice, top doctor in integrative medicine and received Healthcare Hero Corporate Achievement Award in 2006. Uh, Dr. Kumar received the w uh, YWCA Woman of the Year and YWCA Woman of uh, Distinction Awards in 1992. Dr. Kumar is currently accepting new patients at her uh, current practice, the Omani Center. Uh, Dr. Kumar, I know Dr. Kumar for almost five, uh, six years now. And uh, I think Dr. Kumar has been practicing hormone balancing uh, for males and fe for females and males for almost uh, 30 years. Uh, I am Omar Aliwa, pharmacist and compounder and owner of Utopia Pharmacy. And I'm honored tonight to have Dr. Kumar uh, to discuss the simple and complex topic, balancing hormones. Uh, so many questions. What are we looking for when it comes to hormones? Why does it need to be balanced? Uh, actually, do you need hormones? So Dr. Kumar is going to give us a simple complex dive into this beautiful topic. And by that, I would like to introduce Dr. Rose Kumar and meet myself. Thank you, Omar. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining me today. It's a really, really important topic that uh, we're going to be discussing. And it's going to be a little bit nerdy, but don't worry. Uh, what I would like you to do is really get the concept of what hormones are and why they're so important to balance. And um, what we'll do is um, I'll go through the webinar as, as smoothly as possible and then save your questions for later or uh, send them in the chat and at the end, I'm going to hand it over to Omar so that he can explain uh, compounding hormones and why quality matters. And then we'll, I'll take some questions. So let's get started. So what are hormones? Well, hormones are chemical substances. I'm gonna try to move this down here that affect the activity of another part of the body or a target site. So hormones are produced by um, an, an organ and that organ or that gland um, uh, manufactures it, produces it, and then sends it off so that it can work in a different part of the body. They serve as messengers uh, controlling and coordinating activities throughout the body. Endocrine glands are the glands that secrete hormones. Those are the organs that secrete hormones directly into the bloodstream. And so from there, they travel from the place they were made until they reach cells and that take instruction from them to perform very specific functions. And so what happens when a hormone is produced? So say this is the hormone. And, and it reaches a cell and on the cell, there's a receptor. As you can see, this receptor has a specific uh, lock. It's a specific shape that is designed for that specific hormone that then comes and binds on that receptor. And as soon as that, that lock and key binding happens, uh, then there is a message that goes into the cell and the cell then does what the hormone's telling it to do. In the case of, say, um, the uterus, when estrogen is produced, it tells the uterus to build a lining of the uterus. And we'll get more specific in a little bit. So this is a picture of a, the woman's reproductive system. This is the uterus. This is the vagina. These are the fallopian tubes. And these are the ovaries. So you can see the ovaries are kind of suspended by the ovarian ligament into the uterus. And what happens is that 
these ovaries are manufacturing organs for estrogen and under the influence of estrogen an egg grows. This is a sack of eggs in a woman's body. And then the egg is transported then through the fallopian tube into the uterus. So the ovary then is the endocrine gland in a woman's body that produces uh, four different hormones, estradiol, which is estrogen, and uh, progesterone, testosterone, and DHEA. Estradiol is also produced indirectly through extra fat in the body. And so that's something important to, to know because later we'll talk about why some women have too much estrogen in their body and why that's dangerous for women. But I wanna focus mostly on estrogen and progesterone because these are the major hormones in a woman's body that need to be balanced. And we'll get into that pretty um, uh, in, in more detail in a little bit. Testosterone and DHEA are also hormones produced by the ovary and the adrenals. And so we'll I'm going to talk just a little bit briefly about this at the end, so, because these are important to know about, uh, because they also have value for a woman, particularly going through menopause. So estrogen is also termed estradiol. That's the active estrogen that has an impact on the brain, the breasts, ovaries, uterus, vagina, liver, bones. Estrogen reduces bone loss. It doesn't create bone density, but it reduces bone loss. And muscles, it provides muscle strength to uh, women. And so any menopausal woman uh, would probably share my anguish around not having a whole lot of muscle strength when after going through menopause and like when you're pumping weights in the gym, it's harder to do because estrogen levels are low. The second hormone is progesterone and progesterone has way more impact on the body than even estrogen does. Uh, the parts of the body affected by progesterone are the brain, the breasts, ovary, uterus, vagina. So all the different organs that estrogen affects also is affected by progesterone. But progesterone also impacts the gut. It acts as a prebiotic to really flourish the good flora in the gut. It impacts the skin. Women that go into menopause, and over time, their skin will get really dry or wrinkly. Uh, pr progesterone, a little, even a little bit of progesterone after menopause will actually make the skin less wrinkly. Uh, it stimulates hair follicles and it actually builds bone density as opposed to estrogen, which reduces the, the it keeps the bone density from, from being lost. It also helps muscles and tendons stay flexible. So it's a very important hormone. It also affects mood, it affects cognition, it affects our metabolic rate, it affects our sleep cycle, and it affects our nervous system. It provides support to the nervous system. It reduces anxiety, it lightens mood, it increases memory, it supports nerve transmission, it supports the immune system, supports the gut microbiome, like I said earlier. It re also relaxes the coronary arteries and it increases blood flow and oxygenation of the heart. So it's really a very um, useful heart support and cardiovascular supporter. It also reduces blood pressure and hypertension. So women that, for example, um, go through menopause, sometimes their blood pressure will go up because of the progesterone loss effect. And then when their hormones are balanced, their blood pressure can normalize or it'll drop by 10 points or so. It also supports the sleep cycle. So let's just go through this complicated, simple cycle. And please don't um, uh, be nervous about this. I will talk you through this. And I just want you to gain the concept of what happens during a woman's menstrual cycle. So let's just say that you're at day one of your menstrual cycle or day zero. 
what happens is a hormone that is produced by the pituitary, which is a gland that hangs down in the middle of your brain, it hangs down at the bottom of your brain, it regulates all of your endocrine glands. The hormone, the stimulating hormone that the pituitary produces that stimulates the ovary to produce estrogen is FSH. FSH tells the ovary, hey, start producing estrogen. The ovary starts producing estrogen and under the influence of estrogen, one egg grows. So when that egg grows, it grows for about 12 to 14 days under the influence of estrogen. And then another hormone is produced by the pituitary called LH or luteinizing hormone. And that tells the egg to pop. So the egg pops out of the ovary and the white of the egg, if you will, starts producing progesterone. And why is that important around day 12 or 14? Because progesterone level, this is the pink uh, graph, progesterone level rises greatly after ovulation, after the egg pops, in order to maintain the lining of the uterus that estrogen has so carefully created so that a fertilized egg can implant in the ovary and a baby can grow. So what ends up happening is that if um, a baby uh, egg is not fertilized, the progesterone level will then drop and then you'll get your period around day 28 if you have a regular normal cycle. So this is called the luteal phase of, of menstruation of the menstrual cycle, which is right after ovulation. And this is the time where PMS uh, that a lot of women get will occur if progesterone levels are low. So when your progesterone is low, you will get PMS because that balance between estrogen and progesterone is really important for your mood. So estrogen builds the uterine lining. Like I said earlier, progesterone maintains the lining. When an egg is fertilized, a healthy level of progesterone maintains it in the uterus so you don't miscarry. Women that have low progesterone will miscarry um, frequently. And so their OB will possibly put them on progesterone uh, to maintain the lining of the uterus so the egg doesn't miscarry, the fertilized egg doesn't miscarry. So when an egg is not fertilized, then progesterone levels drop and menses occurs like I showed you in the graph. So the progesterone level should balance estrogen for you to feel vibrant and healthy. If you don't, if you're not producing enough progesterone, you're not going to feel vibrant and healthy. And then there's that balance, the ratio between progesterone and estrogen. So you can see this is a good ratio between estrogen and progesterone, but as women get older, as they get older, progesterone level drops and there's a widening of the ratio between estrogen and progesterone. That widened ratio is what creates a lot of the symptoms that I see women for and that I will list for you. They're incredibly um, large numbers of symptoms. But then when estrogen drops as women get older, the estrogen and progesterone are both low. And so that produces a whole other set of symptoms that are menopausal symptoms. So before menopause, as progesterone is dropping faster than estrogen, there's like a huge gradient that forms between estrogen and progesterone that causes these symptoms of premenopause. And we call that estrogen dominance. That means that estrogen is the more prominent hormone uh, than progesterone. It's not balanced. So estrogen is dominant. It's the most common cause of pre or premenopausal or premenstrual symptoms in women. The, what are the causes of estrogen dominance? In midlife, it's the reduction of progesterone, just as the ovaries are aging and not producing enough progesterone. Unhealthy lifestyle choices also produces low progesterone because unhealthy lifestyle choices will reduce the vitality of a woman's egg. And so she, her eggs will not produce enough hormones. So the primary causes of estrogen dominance in young women are diet, the, a poor diet, high in sugar, 
alcohol is a biggie. Women don't realize this, but their drinking is causes them to have reduced fertility. Meat, dairy, processed food, all of these can cause estrogen dominance. Obesity, so when in, in women who are obese or, or who have extra body fat, fat produces a estrogen, estrogen's cousin called estrone. Estrone is kind of a toxic estrogen that converts into estrogen and then, and then the estrogen levels increase. So a really good idea would be to lose weight in a healthy way so that you're not estrogen dominant. Unhealthy gut flora and other way that estrogen dominance occurs because the gut flora, it processes hormones, it metabolizes hormones. So when, hormone, when the flora is not healthy because of our diet or alcohol use, it, which kills off the healthy flora, we don't have the right organisms to metabolize our hormones. Alcohol is again, a primary offender that we don't talk about because we don't wanna stop drinking. But unless we do that, we're not going to have a healthy set of hormones. So before 35 years of age and healthy women, progesterone will balance estrogen. But when progesterone decreases, as we talked about, estrogen becomes the dominant hormone and it overshadows progesterone's numerous health benefits. This is called hormone imbalance. And the, so the combination of an unhealthy diet, regular alcohol use, obesity, stress, and age, you can see where we're, we're, we're going with this, causes your liver to be unhealthy. The liver also metabolizes hormones and deactivates estrogen. And then if you have an unhealthy gut microbiome, you're going to have an increased level of estrogen. So here we are, our friendly ovaries. They produce estrogen. Estrogen goes to the liver. The liver deactivates it. The liver sends deactivated estrogen to the gut. And then the gut uh, um, um, uh, exits the estrogen from the body. In an unhealthy body, the ovaries produce estrogen, estrogen goes to the liver, the liver does not deactivate estrogen or deactivates only some of it, sends it back to the gut. The gut does not um, excrete it. It basically, the bad biome, the bad flora uh, produces beta glucuronidase that causes the estrogen to get reabsorbed in the body. So this is one of the ways that alcohol works is it wipes out your healthy gut flora, you reabsorb the estrogen there. It also causes the liver to not deactivate estrogen when it's done with its job. So those two things together will increase your estrogen level. So the key foods that raise estrogen, anything that is hard on the liver, alcohol, animal protein, sugar, and genetically modified or sprayed foods. How do they do that? Well, the most common hormone disruptor is glyphosate, which is Roundup, which is used profusely in our farming practices. This Roundup, even in small um, uh, amounts, uh, disrupts the um, estrogen binding to the receptor. Remember, we talked about the lock and key, how estrogen just comes in and binds to the receptor. Well, endocrine disruptors kind of have the same kind of lock, but they're different. And so what they do is they, they interfere with estrogen binding. They block the receptor from getting estrogen in, and then they bind to the receptor, and they end up causing other things to happen in the cell, which are unhealthy for us. So if your liver is not healthy, your hormones will likely be out of balance. For example, postmenopausal women who drink alcohol or have a fatty liver will have elevated levels of estrogen, which can cause breast and uterine cancers, strokes, heart attacks, blood clots, weight gain, hypertension, anxiety, and depression. In fact, alcohol is also a primary cause of dementia and cancer. I cannot emphasize this enough uh, for, to my patients. So what are the symptoms of estrogen dominance? Well, estrogen dominance causes heavy periods because we know that estrogen causes 
the development of the lining of the uterus in that first phase of the cycle, if there's too much estrogen, we're gonna develop a thicker lining. A thicker lining means when we get our period, we're gonna bleed more heavily. So this can happen actually during hormone uh, imbalance in the middle of life, because as progesterone is dropping and estrogen is relatively higher, women will develop a thicker lining and bleed more. So what a lot of traditional physicians do is do an ablation to fry the mucous membrane of the woman's uh, lining, is uterine lining, which is a very traumatic procedure. It's loaded with problems. And um, uh, overall, I don't recommend it. What I do recommend is hormone balancing in order to reduce heavy periods. Estrogen dominance also produces muscle cramps, headaches, nausea, bowel changes or irritable bowel disease, palpitations, anxiety, depression, irritability, mood swings, mental fog, fatigue, weight gain, sugar cravings, muscle fatigue, sleep disturbance, nausea, breast pain, joint stiffness, thyroid imbalance, hypertension, and memory loss. So, you know, I don't have to overemphasize how important it is to not have estrogen dominance and to have balanced hormones. The conditions caused are, it's a little bit repetitive, but PCOS, if you've heard of polycystic ovarian syndrome, PMS, endometriosis, fibroids, heavy menstrual bleeding, which we talked about before, painful periods or dysmenorrhea, breast cancer, migraines, hypertension, strokes, heart attacks, weight gain, and infertility. Other conditions, these are some of very uh, basic conditions and common ones that I see in my practice. Women will come in with anxiety, depression, sleep disturbance, memory disturbance, foggy mental state, constipation, irritable bowel. Even young women before their period can have these symptoms. And that's usually an indication that there's some uh, imbalance in the hormones. So the health benefits of progesterone, it increases serotonin levels in the brain and body, promotes gut health, and it regulates sleep cycle. A lot of menopausal and premenopausal women will have disturbed sleep because progesterone is dropping. As soon as hormones are balanced, they sleep really well. The progesterone also increases joint and muscle flexibility. So as progesterone levels drop as we age, the joints and muscles get tight. We call this, you know, the a 50 year old woman is typically going to have a frozen shoulder or a rotator cuff tear. And that is usually an effect of estrogen dominance or low progesterone. Again, progesterone will lower blood pressure. It increases coronary artery blood flow and perfusion of the heart muscle. Health benefits, it regulates the heart rhythm. It supports memory, supports the nervous system, enhances feelings of well-being. It actually supports the production of active thyroid hormones in the liver. It promotes bone density and it helps fertility. So a significant percentage of women with low progesterone will be infertile or miscarry if they become pregnant. And now you understand why. Because progesterone maintains the lining of the uterus in pregnancy before the placenta takes over this function. So right when the embryo is developed and the fertilized egg implants, progesterone is the protector of that baby until the placenta forms and then takes over maintaining the pregnancy. So around age 50, uh, menstrual periods stop. The average age is about 52, right before, like between 38 and 50, we call that perimenopause or premenopause, and postmenopause is the time after periods have stopped. So the time before a woman goes into menopause, as I said, is pre or peri. Perimenopause can actually last for up to 15 years. It creates significant stress and body changes for women because female hormones will wax and wane. So you need a physician who can track this for you so you can maintain balance. Back to that menstrual cycle, hormone levels, 
Estrogen is produced in the follicular phase of the cycle. We ovulate and then progesterone levels rise. If you don't have a fertilized egg, if you don't fertilize an egg or get pregnant, progesterone drops and you get your period. Again, we've got this estrogen progesterone ratio, which is very balanced until we age. As we age, progesterone drops and there's a gradient that forms where estrogen is not dropping yet, progesterone is dropping faster. So we have estrogen dominance, which creates wreaks havoc in the body until we go into menopause. And then at that point, estrogen and progesterone are both low. So menopause. So what, what is happening in our traditional medical system? This is their answer to menopause, really. We don't want this. Menopause is really defined as the cessation of menstrual cycles. The average age is 52. And when estrogen levels decrease, estrogen dependent organs, such as breasts and uterus and skin and brain, they are all in the vaginal wall and they're all impacted by a lack of estrogen. But when menstruation ceases, the uterine and vaginal linings also thin out because all of those cells are estrogen dependent and then libido goes down. Once both estrogen and progesterone decline, a woman may become more symptomatic till she reaches menopause. And traditional medicine treats these symptoms with HRT. I'm sure all of you have heard this name, hormone replacement therapy. This is synthetic. The system, the traditional system, cannot prescribe, they cannot patent natural hormones. So that's why you cannot get them from your pharmacy. Common symptoms of estrogen withdrawal or a significant drop in estrogen levels are hot flashes and night sweats, pain upon intercourse because of the thinning of the vagina and a reduction of libido. We have no context in our society or framework to deal with this. It's not talked about. It's not, we're not educated in this. We're not given strategies. We're not given a skill set. So the traditional medicine's answer to hormone changes is this. This is what my patients come in with. And by the time I'm done with them in a few months, they're off everything. There's a much safer and better way to balance hormones before and after menopause. And the thing I really want you to take home with you is less is more. Less hormones for balance rather than too many hormones. Bioidentical hormone replacement after menopause is not safe. It's balancing that is safe. Hormone balance is totally different than hormone replacement. We don't want to replace hormones. We only want to balance them. Bioidentical progesterone, it balances the estrogen before menopause. You know, see, remember that gradient I showed you? So it narrows that gradient so that the symptoms get better. And after menopause, when both estrogen and progesterone drop, we just need a small dose of progesterone or occasional estrogen if we're not very symptomatic. And that all, both of those must be compounded and bioidentical. And that's enough to sustain well being in women. So this is a much safer therapy and it's a much more gentle way than synthetic hormones. And they can be measured in the blood unlike hormone replacement therapy, which cannot be measured by a blood level. This is because the molecular structure of synthetic hormones is not identical to what your body produces. What's identical is the bioidentical hormones. That's why we can measure them in the blood. Saliva tests are not accurate. I do not recommend them because they're extremely variable and it's really hard to balance your hormones via a saliva test because they're, you know, they're hourly, they're, you know, hour to hour they change. So you, there's no consistent level that you can use. The blood level is much more consistent, much more accurate. And it gives us the evidence that we need in order to dose adjust and maintain an appropriate dose. Bioidentical hormones are plant-based and when they're used in low doses, they can be quality of life saving. 
they literally can. I've had so many patients that have been suffering and can't sleep or having sweats or having uh, mental fog. And as soon as they start on natural progesterone or a little bit of estrogen, their brain lights up again and they feel like themselves again. They're sleeping better and deeply. So the positive effects of hormones can be felt within 48 hours. I mean, as low as for as, as as short of a time as 48 hours. And blood levels must be monitored. You cannot be on bioidentical hormones and then forget about it because you know you could be under stress and the hormone levels rise or the hormone levels drop. You need to be able to monitor this every three to four months if you are a menstrual woman. But if you're a menopausal woman, at first, what I do is I when I start a woman, after menopause on bioidentical hormones, I'll check her, check her level uh, in the two months after I start her and then four months. And then if things are consistent, if her level is consistent, then she doesn't need to be checked for about six months, five to six months. But many holistic and integrative physicians, they prescribe bioidentical hormones at the same way that traditional physicians prescribe HRT. They're giving, putting very high dose testosterone pellets into women. They're extremely, extremely dangerous. Testosterone when given at high doses will convert into estrogen. It'll make your estrogen dominance worse and you will gain a ton of weight. And I've seen women gain 20, 30 pounds with those testosterone pellets. I saw one woman have pericarditis and have, you know, which is the inflammation of the lining of surrounding her heart from the testosterone pellet. She was also put on very high doses of bioidentical estrogen and progesterone, and it was just off the wall. She ended up in the emergency room and it cost her her $10,000 deductible to save her life. Not worth doing pellets or HRT even bioidentically. Balancing hormones is a science and an art, and it must be customized for each woman because each one of us has a different diet, a different biology, different receptor sensitivity, uh, different levels of stress. So that has to be customized. There's no one size fits all. So let's talk DHEA for a few minutes. DHEA is a hormone that is produced at a massive level when we're a fetus or when we're young. After birth, the DHEA levels peak between the ages of 20 and 30 when we're in our, at our prime, and then they start declining at about 5% a year. By age 70, the level is much lower, but it's also produced in the ovaries and the adrenal glands. Stress will initially increase your DHEA levels. DHEA, when go, goes way up, converts into estrogen. So D, people, take DHEA over the counter and they're taking high doses and then they become estrogen dominant. They start gaining weight. They might have a heart attack. They might have a stroke or a blood clot just with over-the-counter DHEA. I would highly, highly recommend you not do that. Stress will in initially increase the DHEA. So stress can make you estrogen dominant by increasing your DHEA level. But chronic stress can actually reduce your DHEA level, uh, which is a biomarker for adrenal fatigue. So when we talk about adrenal fatigue, it's less cortisol and more DHEA that actually drops. And when DHEA drops, the mind gets foggy, uh, memory gets shot, and you feel super tired and unresilient. It protects the brain and the nervous system. It has antioxidant, antihypertensive, anti-inflammatory properties. And a low DHEA is related to mood and anxiety disorders, depression, and also PTSD gets flared when the DHEA is low. It is linked to memory loss, and it's a biomarker for dementia. It's and it and also decreased mental function and immunosuppression. Stretch and, stress and aging are primary causes for a low DHEA. So again, when we, when we recommend DHEA, we want to do a blood test uh, to check and make sure that the level is adequate and you're not converting it into estrogen. So the over-the-counter DHEA is not standardized and the doses recommended are not 
blood level specific and they're generally too high. I've seen patients come in with their holistic physicians or their nurse practitioners or alternative practitioners putting them on 50 milligrams of DHEA because they're feeling tired, no blood levels are checked, and they're you know a mess when they come to see me from too much DHEA for too long. So only take it when of compounded when it's compounded and when a physician who knows what they're doing is um, prescribing it. Testosterone, a few words about that. It's produced in the ovaries and adrenal glands. It provides vital energy and sex drive. It can affect cognition, but more in men than women. It's a key hormone in men. It's a secondary or tertiary hormone in women. It exists as free and total testosterone. And that's important to know because if you ever want to be on testosterone or feel like you need it, you first want to check a testosterone level. And what you want to check is the free and total testosterone in your blood, not in your saliva. So free testosterone is your bioavailable testosterone. And based on that level is what your compounding physician will prescribe the testosterone dose uh, based on that free level. So many symptoms of testosterone deficiency, they overlap with estrogen or progesterone. So everything needs to be checked in order to know what exactly you need. And the effect of food on hormone balance, way, way important uh, because this we can control. So just to recap, meat and dairy increases estrogen and aggravates estrogen dominance. Sugar increases male sex hormones. So sugar will increase testosterone in a woman's body. If the testosterone is too high, it'll convert into estrogen, causing estrogen dominance. So when you're on a whole, whole food plant-based diet, this does the opposite. It reduces excess estrogen and it assists in hormone balance. So foods that assist in healing estrogen dominance are cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, radishes, cauliflower, cabbage, kale, turnips, watercress, rutabaga, arugula, kohlrabi, collard greens. Have uh, one or more of these every other day or every day. They're just so good for you. So how do these work? Well, the liver produces an enzyme that detoxifies or deactivates estrogen like what I talked about earlier in this webinar. And cruciferous vegetables contain a chemical which increases the liver's ability to deactivate uh, estrogen. And then the extract of this enzyme is called uh, diindole methane or DIM. And you may have seen the supplement DIM. And so what DIM does is it deactivates estrogen and it also blocks the estrogen receptor. So if women have for example, you know, too much estrogen after menopause, I typically put them on DIM to protect them from the negative effects of estrogen. So these protective chemicals, they convert potent estrogens to weaker, less cancer promoting estrogens, but they also partially block the effects of estrogen on cells, directly inhibiting cancer cells. So what the toxic byproducts of metabolism do is they damage DNA, creating cancer cells. And so these vegetables can really help repair that damage. Vitamin E actually found in nuts and seeds, not in a supplement, it increases blood flow to the ovaries, increasing progesterone levels pre in pre and perimenopausal women. So the level of progesterone that it promotes is not enough to balance your estrogen. But if a woman is eating a poor diet and wants to have some level of balance in her body, uh, eating a whole food plant-based diet with nuts and seeds will actually balance both estrogen as you now know how and uh, progesterone. This is the cornucopia that we should be putting in our body. Color is great for our body. Here's a typical meal, my patients sometimes say to me, well, if I don't eat meat, what am I going to eat? Well, this is what you're going to eat. 
You're going to eat lots of color and your protein is right here, garbanzo beans or lentils or beans or tofu or soy. I know there's a lot of controversy about soy and estrogen, but soy is highly, highly protective in women and, and in men because soy creates a, a very gentle barrier on the estrogen receptor against toxic estrogens, those xenoestrogens we saw. And so the most important thing to know about soy is it has to be organic for it to be protective and not in very high quantities. So here we are again with the cornucopia of vegetables that will help us, the cruciferous vegetables that will help us protect ourselves from estrogen dominance. And if you need, if you would like to do another deep dive into this, my website called uh, www rosekumarmd.com has webinars that can go into more detail. Today, I just wanted to give you an overview of why hormone balance is important. And we have about 15 minutes left. Uh, my book, Becoming Real, is packed full of information about midlife and how you can, you know, kind of navigate this process, which is really not supported by our society. So I'm gonna actually hand this over to the mic over to Omar. And Omar, why don't you help us understand why quality matters when it comes to compounded hormones? And then we'll take some questions. Great, thank you, Dr. Kumar for this beautiful presentation. I have some questions that came through and if you have more questions, you can ask them. But let's say that Dr. Kumar was talking about uh, bioidentical hormones and the bioidentical hormones look exactly as the hormones in the, uh, uh, in the body. So compounding gets to be kind of a, a secret and we have to tell the secret as well. Uh, a pharmacy is going to make uh, estrogen. Another pharmacy will make estrogen. A pharmacy is going to make progesterone. Another pharmacy is going to make progesterone. But is the formula the same? Uh, that is a challenging question. So you have to really focus with the pharmacy that you deal with to make sure that they have a standard, standardized process to reproduce uh, the same compound that is going to show results that the doctor wants to have uh, with you in the treatment plan. Um, at Wildopia, for instance, we have PCAP accreditation. This is an accreditation to standardize our process. And we use the highest quality product because for instance, a progesterone, if it is not the smallest size of progesterone, more than 99% of the progesterone, the absorption doesn't get to be optimal. Uh, if we're not using the best base, the absorption is not going to be optimal. And you're not going to know that. They're not going to tell you that. Uh, therefore, the repetition of the pharmacy is very important. And where you get your compound is very important. And uh, the customer service is important. For us as uh, clinicians in the pharmacy, when we're compounding, customer service means taking care of you, making sure that the lab that makes your compound is actually a safe place for compounding and can produce results that you can trust. Uh, at Wiltopia, we do the, the hard work to make sure that we're verifying what you're getting and we make sure that you are actually, uh, you can see results and uh, you can have a follow-up uh, follow kind of quality continuing with you. Uh, Dr. Kumar, I have some questions um, and I can start, okay? Uh, first one is uh, there is OTC hormones like progesterone in the market. Are they safe to get a quick help with my uh, problems with hormones? The OTC progesterone, I don't recommend it because uh, it's, it's difficult for women to know how to use it. And these are not standardized um, for doses. So you'll never know how much dose you're taking, whether it's too much or too little. 
So I probably would not recommend that. Another thing that's come up is essential oil companies are producing uh, progesterone. And uh, that has become very unsafe for women to take because it's a hormone and it's not standardized. So my suggestion would be to only use progesterone that is compounded by a pharmacy. I also want to say that the relationship of the physician with the pharmacist is also really important. And I can vouch for my relationship with Omar and his customer service is like five star. My customers love him. And if there's any problem, he handles it right away. So for me, that's a very high quality pharmacist. And so you, I Dr. really appreciate what you do for our community, Omar. Thank you, Dr. Kohler, and we appreciate you as well, big time, for sure. We've been Thank very you. supportive to the pharmacy since we started. Uh, you gave us a support from the beginning, and I was just starting, and uh, you believed in us, and uh, we kind of walked, uh, walked the talk, and we try, we always try, and no one is perfect, but we're always uh, learning day after day. Um, I learn a lot every time I hear you speak, and it's just... Um, uh, I, I am. Uh, I like the fact that you're always connecting the dots. Uh, I have a patient who's asking, "What age you think would be suitable to seek help with hormone balancing? Is it age? Is it symptoms? Uh, when do I feel like I need to see uh, uh, see you?" That's a, a excellent question. You know. Aver on average, I will see women uh, going through hormone imbalance in the mid 30s and beyond. Um, it's sad because when I started out in medicine about 35 years ago, uh, the number of women that were um, um, going through hormone imbalance were so much fewer than they are now because over the last 20 years, our food supply has become so corrupted. There's so much stress and there's so much more alcohol consumption that the hormones are getting more imbalanced sooner, earlier in women's lives. And so uh, I, I, will, I would not be surprised if around 35 women will come in and say, you know, I'm having a lot of PMS. I get really depressed before my period or uh, I have a lot of cramping before my period, uh, what do I do? And then I usually check their hormones and see if they're out of balance. When women are much younger, what I've found is that if their hormones are imbalanced, uh, doing hormone balance for them, like a 20 year old or a 25 year old, I don't like using compounded hormones for, or any kind of hormones for those women. That's typically a, um, can be handled by helping their diet get healthier and Chinese medicine, acupuncture and Chinese herbs work well for those women. And they respond uh, much better than by giving them uh, bioidentical hormones. So I, I hope that answers your question. Great, great. Thank you, Dr. Kumar. I have a, a, a kind of a, a, a nerdy question. Uh, you talked about food, lifestyle, you talked about stress, and you talked about hormones. Mm -hmm. It is complex and simple. It is magical and does not seem to be that easy. And at the same time, it appears to be easy. What is this? My doctor never talks to me about this. They always look for a prescription pad for an answer, but you do not seem to be looking for this prescription pad. Mm -hmm. Well, your physician is paid by a corporate medical system. And there's a lot of incentive. They have protocols they have to follow in order to get paid, in order to keep their job. And it's unfortunate, but that's how the system is set up. And any physician in it, uh, it has to follow certain protocols and check certain boxes of prescribing. I left that corporate system when I was 35 and never to return because I was uh, I refused to... Uh, um, I dissented against that kind of system. I love talking to my patients, I love educating them, and I was not able to do that in the corporate system. So it gives me more flexibility to um, uh, 
do the research, to use my clinical judgment, to, uh, to measure the evidence, to look at the evidence, and to share that with my patients because relationships take time, education takes time, and your physician likely has 10 minutes with you and has to um, come to a solution. So it's unfortunate that it's happened this way, but that's why I think that, you know, physicians are burnt out and they're dissatisfied with their jobs, but these are the protocols that they're required to follow to keep their jobs. And uh, you're the loser in that formula, and so is the physician. Uh, Dr. Kumar, I have someone asking, uh, you make uh, virtual consults for patients living in Wisconsin? Yes, I do, and all over the country. Uh, yes. Great. Uh, can you comment on uh, a patient is asking that she says uh, she has secondary adrenal insufficiency a few years ago. Mm -hmm. At that time, she had zero estradiol, testosterone, and DHEA. Mm -hmm. Today, I'm hoping my hormones have improved and leveled, but I sadly admit I definitely suffer with memory issues. Mm -hmm. So uh, what would you say like this course of action for this patient? I think, I think my suggestion would be to have your hormones checked. I can certainly help you with that or your physician can. So I would actually check your estradiol, your progesterone, your DHEA, your testosterone level, and just see where they are. And it'll give you a, a whole lot of information about you know, what could be the contributing factor. Also really um, be very vigilant about your diet. And you know, if you go on a whole food plant-based diet, you're in much better shape to getting hormone balance and getting your nervous system to be supported. There's some supplements that you can use also. Probiotics are really a great idea, but I don't really recommend over-the-counter probiotics. Uh, you know, you walk in and you take what says 60 billion, 100 billion, not a good idea to uh, self-prescribe probiotics because they can actually create dysbiosis or dysregulated gut. Uh, so there's a probiotic that I sell at the Omani Center that I've used for 10 years that is incredibly uh, helpful in hormone metabolism and memory uh, and anxiety improvement. And it's by a company called Orenda. And uh, if you want more information about that, I'm happy to answer your questions about that privately or uh, if you see me for a consult. Great. Uh, uh, Dr. Kumar, uh, if a patient is having a virtual consult with you, how are they able to uh, get the uh, lab, lab values if they don't see you in person for the first visit? Do they have to see you for the first visit? First, they have to see me for the first visit most of the time so that I know what labs to order. And then based on if you have insurance coverage for your labs, I can order those labs. If you don't, I usually use lifeextension.com, which is a really inexpensive way to get your labs done if you have a high deductible. And then I can help you determine what labs to get through them. And then once you get the labs, you don't have to see me for those labs unless there's uh, many, many different imbalances. But if for most people, I'm able to let them know what to do just through the physician portal. And then you'll see me once you're, once you're put on hormones or not uh, two months after the initial consult. But I stay in very close touch with my patients on the portal. So um, don't worry about that, that part. That is great, uh, Dr. Kumar. Now, there is pop-up um, ads that come about this probiotics or this is the, the, the new thing, the multivitamin that's going to balance everything and the magic mm -hmm. pill that you're going to take and you're going to feel awesome. Um, and then there is also those kind of diets that can be kind of helpful or not helpful. How to know what is suitable for, for me? Like, let's say a woman at, at, at 40, 45, trying to balance her life. Is it safe to start from food or is it safe to start from hormones? Because I, I, 
question that I get at the pharmacy a lot, where do I start? Sure. Well, I think the most, the safest bet is to start with your diet. And I have a really good uh, webinar. It's actually, you know, one of my prized possessions. It took me a hundred hours to create this webinar. It's called What to Eat to Prevent and Reverse Disease. It kind of gives you an overview of how to eat and how to make conscious choices. So if you go to rose, rosekumarmd.com, you can purchase that webinar, it's $9.99 and it's yours and you can watch it as many times as possible just so that you can kind of get the concept of why food is so foundational. Every cell in your body eats what you eat. Your microbiome eats what you eat. And so that's where I typically start with people. And then supplements are just that, they are supplements. They're meant to supplement your diet. They're not meant to be replacements for your diet. So the way that food is medicine is something that I, I really hope that in my lifetime, our country um, values because food is medicine and food is poison. So how do we learn you know, how to create a strong, healthy foundation in our body. And that's one of the, one of my passions is to teach people how to do that. So, you know, people uh, that are putting pop-ups on your computer, they're trying to sell their products. And so they're going to uh, do a good job trying to sell them. The probiotic industry knows that people's guts are not, not right. And the thing to remember with probiotics is a lot of the probiotics that are refrigerated, they have a shelf life, they deteriorate over time. You don't know how long they've been on the shelf. You bring them home, they deteriorate a little bit more, and then you take them. And as soon as they hit your stomach, they deteriorate more. So how much of that 50 billion are you getting? Nobody knows. We don't know how that works. So I typically recommend... Uh, shelf stable or uh, probiotics that don't require refrigeration. You know, Arenda Ease is one of them. Hyperbiotics Pro 15 is one of them. I'm sure Omar carries some at the pharmacy that are shelf stable. He also carries Arenda Ease. So it's, it's kind of this bestseller, which has been a, an amazing product for my patients with anxiety, depression, you know, uh, even Parkinson's disease psoriasis, autoimmune diseases, that this is a probiotic that can populate your microbiome. And if you want to buy it online, you go to www.omanicenter.com to news and resources. There's a drop down that says Orenda supplements, and then you can um, go to their website and order it through my, web through my website from Orenda. So that's an easy way. A lot of my patients will do a auto ship. And so they'll just get it every month or every couple of months. So that, that would be my recommendation. Now, some people, about 5% of my patients, they get a stomach upset with the Orenda Ease. And in that case, I recommend the Hyperbiotics Pro 15. So a lot of my patients, you know, it's like, it's really not that complicated, but most of them don't buy probiotics from the health food store or any supplements from a generic pharmacy. You really wanna have high quality multivitamins, food-based uh, supplements that your pharmacist like Omar can educate you about before you buy them. So um, I just wanna say something and I, I'm gonna be very unbiased saying that. Uh, Dr. Kumar doesn't have a prescription pad that she kind of tries to find an answer in. Uh, listening to what is going on, looking at labs and symptoms, finding a solution and balancing hormones can happen without hormones. It can happen with a holistic way of looking at uh, the body and uh, everything together. So that's why I am highly recommending reading the book, Becoming Real. Uh, written by Dr. Kumar, and it was, I think, edited last year, and uh, edits are wonderful. And, and yeah, just the book is talking about the systems of the body and how you can look at yourself as uh, one compartment. Uh, you should embrace what you have. You should embrace the years of life. And um, maybe the second half of life is much easier because it's more stable. 
that's what we're uh, we're seeking for you. Food is part of it. Supplements is part of it. But it's all about you, and you're the miracle of this uh, of this life. And uh, for us at the pharmacy, yes, we our business is based on compounding, but this is not the solution. The solution is to find what suits you, what works for you. Uh, so going through the journey with a practitioner who truly listens and has the tools, understands the methods of treatment. Dr. Kumar, you've been uh, working with uh, balancing hormones since like for 30 years now. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, about 30 years. Yeah, and I, I, never, I never started out wanting to do that. My patients were desperate. And so they were teaching me, you know, what was really interesting is I had um, a whole bunch of patients with fibromyalgia, that wastebasket term that uh, traditional medicine created for women that have chronic pain or chronic muscle aches. And um, these women, you know, this is now 30 years ago, they were getting over the counter progesterone and using it and saying their fibromyalgia went away. And I got really curious, like, why is this working? Why does progesterone work? And how does this work? And so I started to, you know, do my nerdy science investigation, investigative uh, medicine. And um, it just kept growing and growing and growing. And I learned more and more and more. And here we are now 30 years later with a protocol and a way, an art and a science of doing this that's evidence-based from your body. So, you know, we wanna be able to just customize everything because as I said earlier, each person is different and needs to be, it needs to be customized. Great. Uh, okay, I think uh, we, uh, we kind of uh, at the end of our talk and uh, thanks everyone for uh, attending joining and uh, we're going to send the recording tomorrow please feel free to share it with your uh, friends who might um, make use of the information uh, if you want to make an appointment with dr kumar um, i'm just going to say through the website uh, calling the omani center uh, communicate with dr kumar's team and uh, 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 get any details uh, Dr. Kumar, thank you for, uh, for attending today and for this beautiful dive uh, deep webinar. Um, we truly appreciate everything that you do. And yeah, thanks everyone for attending. Thank you so much, everybody. And thank you, Omar, for being, you, Omar. being such a great host and such a great <laughs> pharmacist. <laughs> appreciate that. Thank you for being awesome. Take care. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye, everybody.